Okay, so what was all that grinding and all the sparks? Well, that was the modification of this piece here. And this piece here is the bulkhead frame stay, is what I'm calling it. And you can kind of see what ended up having to happen here is I had to make a cut into the splash guard piece that goes under the fender. And what we had to do is make this to where I could bend it out and get it to where the plumbing for the air conditioning system can come through. The problem is that the center of where your hole is going to drill needs to be 13 inches off of that sidewall over there, and that is pretty much exactly in line with where the bulkhead stay wants to be for the frame support. So what we've done is we have done what's needed. And in doing that, I've made it to where the bulkhead stays down on the outside, give me a, you know, a little bit more splash protection being outside than inside, but most importantly, it's going to let me have the flexibility of where the plumbing needs to go without this piece in the way. Now these splash guards are always a mess if they're original. You can see here this one's already rotted out and barely in contact. So the cuts that I made in order to make room for that, I'm totally okay with. And what's gonna end up happening is when this truck does have its restoration modification done and we bring in the TDI engine that's gonna come in here, at that time we'll throw in a spot weld here. You know, we'll tack this up with a beta weld on either side and make that you know nice and structurally strong again. And at the same time, I might with my splash guard be able to fabricate a little bit cleaner cut and at the same time with my foot well I might be able to be even cleaner than I am right now you can see that having to do a hole saw right here on the angle was a pain this was done nicely from the inside of the engine bay where I could get to that and then I came in here with a grinder and it got a little bit away from me down in here however it does fit quite nicely but this plumbing goes through this rubber boot and you can see that's gonna slide up right in through there now these two, of course, will mount here, and then I'm pretty much done. I'll run my drain back through here again. But here's the two bolts for the stay that we just did, and that's really gonna be the whole kit and caboodle of getting this thing inside the truck. Of course, the wiring harness here, we'll have to go ahead and make our connections and go to accessory power, straight power, and grounded power. But that all comes later when we finally do the under the engine modification work, and I actually have the ability to hook up the air conditioning system air conditioning system and connect it to the AC pump and the um, condenser fan. I will tell you right now that if you're 100% motivated that you're going to do this, please understand that there are still some unknowns yet. I will not be finishing this modification under the hood probably for another two or three months. I'm going to drive it like this. I'm just going to make sure that the pipes are nice and protected and no dirt and grime can get up into the AC system for what's going on up under the, under the dash. The Steve Parker modification that I'm going to do for the TDI says 100% that the alternator has to be moved from its location on the TDI up over to where the AC pump sits. There's a, on a TDI engine, there's actually a part of the engine that has four holes, and that's actually the mounting area for the AC pump, and it comes with its own belt system to go back to the uh, wheels on the front of the engine here, of course. Now, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have to ignore that right now if I want to continue this idea. Worst case scenario, I just pull out everything I did, and that's okay. But um, our goal is to stay going forward on this because I believe I have just enough room because the TDI engine is going to sit back pretty far. It's going to come to about here. And I do believe we're going to be then dealing with the radiator, intercooler, and then I do think I have enough room for the condenser. So we'll find out, and then a little electric pusher fan will fit up in here nicely. We've done that before on a V8 conversion. So I think I've got room to take, and of course the big difference is here that I've lost about this 10 inches, but the engine set so far back, I believe it's gonna fit. I've done lots and lots of measurements, and so far, the only thing I'm really worried about is the whole concept that the alternator should be fouling the frame. I think that's for the general layperson that doesn't want to get into a lot of cutting and we're willing to do what we need to do to make it work. So I think we're going to make it work. So we're going to keep pushing forward. And just to finish up the story, obviously what we have right here is the plumbing now coming through and I will go ahead and make sure that these are not going to rattle out. But um, I'm in a good place for this to all stay nice and safe and sound. This truck won't be get driven too much till we do the restoration and, and the modification for the engine. But um, you know, it does fit. I'm really okay with what we've done to do this. And to answer the question of, will it fit? The answer is, so far. So far. Please ignore this really ugly piece of metal, because check it out. Wonder Twin Powers activate. What really ugly piece of metal? <laughs> we'll cut that out later. Anyway, um, yeah, so 
again, that splash guard is not something we're being loyal to right now. We wanted to make sure this could fit, and we'll do custom little tailoring later on. You know, somebody has to have been asking themselves a question and wondering if I'd show it, and the question is, can you get this into gear? And the answer is yes. There's reverse first. That only hits because I don't have this sucked up in yet with the lag, as we've talked about. But that's in first nicely. Second. I've got work, lots of work to do on this transmission. But there we are in third and then back to fourth. Uh, by the way, what we know about this truck is that somebody drove it from South Dakota back to Colorado. And I believe they had it in four-wheel drive and didn't know it. As when people buy these that are not um, aware that they're buying something um, older... I, I don't want to in any way say negative. I mean, if you love Landy's, get into one and, and learn it. But you're driving a tractor, and, and you can't take things for granted. The differentials on this truck happen to be uh, different ratios for the front and the rear axle. And so if you drive this truck from South Dakota to Colorado in four-wheel drive, you will blow up the rear differential and snap the rear half shaft, which is what happened on this truck. Now, you might be asking, what did that do to the transmission? <laughs> yeah. So the transmission actually works well. The problem is, that's in gear, and I still have this much play on the shaft. So I'm going to get in there and tighten that up a little bit. And, um, yeah, so finding gears is a little interesting. But, again, we're off topic a little bit. But the question was, hey, hey, but can you shift? Yeah, you can. No problem. Thanks for watching.